Right. Good morning. I think we're ready to get started here. Uh, thank you for taking some time out to have, have a coffee and, and listen to me blab on a little bit about what we're calling the Coco Stack. Um, just for some introduction, um, my name is Jonathan LaCour. I'm the Vice President of Cloud and Development at DreamHost. Uh, DreamHost has uh, been around for about uh, 16, 17 years now, and I've been uh, at DreamHost for about four. My background is startups, cloud. Um, I've been in the Python community since the 1.4 days, and the OpenStack community since Cactus Diablo. Um, and now I run the cloud division at, at DreamHost. So what are, we, what are we here to talk about today? Well, we're going to discuss a little bit about the history of DreamHost and the LAMP stack, which is something that you're probably all familiar about. Um, and then we're going to talk about kind of Dream Compute, which is our OpenStack public cloud, and, and the journey that uh, we took over three, four years getting to uh, release that to our customers. And we'll talk about the stack that we've built on that we believe is kind of the LAMP stack of the next generation, right? And then we'll wrap up and talk a little bit about the next chapters. So as I mentioned, DreamHost was founded in 1997 uh, by four uh, students at Harvey Mudd. Uh, which is a small um, school in Southern California. Uh, and, and one of those founders was Sage Weil, the creator of, of Ceph. Um, and you know, we were founded as a web host doing shared VPS, dedicated hosting at the time, just shared. Uh, over that period, we've evolved, grown to 400,000 customers and 1.5 million domains hosted. Uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of uh, instances of many open source applications, like WordPress is, is the dominant one that we, we host. Um, and you know, this is kind of all built on the shoulders of the familiar LAMP stack, which, you know, kind of emerged during the 90s and 2000s. Uh, and it, it made it, you know, really easy for us to become a successful business because developers had a really easy way to, to develop apps, right? They had an extremely powerful, you know, relational database, right? Rivaling the really pricey, expensive proprietary databases. Um, they had great programming languages with a lot of immediacy. You could just unzip a PHP app in your public HTML directory and off you go, right? Um, customers really get it, they understand it. And, and on the back of this LAMP stack, we've developed, you know, a platform, a hosting platform running on Linux where people can go into the panel, they can one-click install apps, they can develop their own apps. And this was the platform that developers were used to for many years. Well, fast forward a bit and, and cloud starts to emerge and applications become higher scale. Um, you know, immediacy is still available, but people want more. Uh, and, and LAMP stack really focuses on application issues, right? It's not going anywhere. We're still going to be using LAMP for many years, but it doesn't address the underlying infrastructure, the architecture. Um, we've kind of out-evolved that. Um, some of the big infra issues that, that we were dealing with back in the you know, mid-2000s, and we're still struggling with today, obviously, um, everyone is struggling with, storage, right? Um, in shared hosting, you're cramming hundreds of people onto single you know, nodes, right? And having some sort of storage architecture that doesn't put everyone you know, in, a, in a common failure domain that would, would be a big problem, or just local storage where you know, it's very hard to recover from a failure, uh, this is a big problem. You know, we want to be able to scale up and out and, and uh, you know, networking, right? Segmenting out customers. Uh, is, is a huge issue. When you're dealing with mass market hosting, you've got, again, we have 400,000 customers, 1.5 million domains, and it's a bit like the Wild West in some regards. And this is true for every web host, every infrastructure provider out there. Um, you need to find a way that on the network you can segment people. Security, um, it really is the Wild West. Sometimes I feel like about 80% of the time we spend just updating you know, PHP content management systems for people. Uh, this is like our entire function as a business. Uh, it's a big issue when, when you have all these apps hosted for people on, a, on an infrastructure. We really need to harden this and have something for the next generation. Automation, scaling up and out, uh, making it easier for us to just provision more infrastructure, make it available to customers. So we need a new stack, something for the next 15 years. Right, a complement to LAMP, not a replacement. So let's talk about Dream Compute. Dream Compute is our OpenStack cloud. Um, we started the, the journey about three and a half, four years ago, um, very early in the OpenStack days. Before OpenStack was really ready to build a public cloud, we were starting this you know, effort to build a public cloud on OpenStack. We're targeting uh, a very different market than the typical OpenStack public cloud. We're not going after big enterprise. That's not really our our, uh, our core market. You know, we're a mass market hosting company. Um, we attract a lot of developers, entrepreneurs, smaller businesses, an underserved market in cloud right now. 
with the big behemoths going after you know winning the IT, the back end, you know, making all of those come into the cloud. We really want to get the individual developers and have the have them have a place where they can develop cool new things. But we didn't want to just develop this for our customers, right? We've got a massive amount of infrastructure that we have to support. And so we wanted to have a place where we could develop a new stack that, that could carry us forward. So we want an infrastructure for ourselves. So we had some fundamental design principles that we set upon when we decided to build out Dream Compute. So on the storage front, we wanted something that was uh, shared and resilient, uh, a place where we could scale out and be highly cost effective. We needed snapshotting. We wanted to have it be self-healing and easy to manage, right? So that we didn't have to have this massive team. And we really wanted it to be uh, performant, but also resilient. So this was extremely important to us. Um, the most important part was actually availability and resiliency, not performance. Um, security. So every tenant, we wanted to have them isolated at layer two uh, from everyone else. So this was uh, another critical um, uh, decision that we made early on. And, and four years ago, when you're making this decision, there's not a whole lot of choices in the marketplace. There's not a whole lot of choices in open source. We knew we needed some sort of SDN or virtual networking solution. Uh, IPv6, we needed it to be IPv6 native. You know, we are one of the last major independent web hosts. We don't have massive banks of IPv4 space available to us. And in fact, the world is out, you know. Now it's just a bunch of people trading them around, you know, and uh, it's, it's, exhaustion is here. So we needed to um, build for the future where, you know, everyone's, you know, ring is on, got an IP address, you know what I mean? Like smart everything everywhere. So um, we wanted IPv6 from the start. And, and another really critical thing is we built on the shoulders of LAMP, completely open source. We want that for the future, for our next stack. We can't have it be dependent upon any one vendor. We want to be able to um, build on open standards. So no magic, no opaque solutions. And what do we end up with? Well, the Coco stack. Ceph, OpenStack, Cumulus, and Overlay. That's what that all stands for. Um, so while the 90s and 2000s were the era of us building up on the LAMP stack, now we're building on the Cocoa stack. This is a result of three plus years of building a cloud on OpenStack. Um, and we tested a lot of different things. This is what worked for us and we believe would work for a lot of other people. Um, and these four components have helped us you know, realize all of those fundamental design principles that we set out to achieve. So we'll talk about Ceph first, um, primarily because it was born at DreamHost, right? Uh, as I mentioned, Sage, uh, one of our co-founders, created it really partially because of the problems we were experiencing across our infrastructure at DreamHost. And we incubated it, developed it for six, seven years, and then spun out a little company called Ink Tank, uh, which we sold to Red Hat last year, I guess. It's been a while now. Um, and that's been a huge success. It's really changed the face of storage, right? And it's all open source from the beginning, not, not late to the game, now we're free, now we're open. No, from the beginning it's been open source. So that was very important to us. And it's got good performance, great if you, if you really tune it just, just right. And it's easy for us to manage with a small team. You know, our, our public cloud, we've got multi-petabyte clusters and we've got one, two people who are managing our Ceph cluster. That's pretty phenomenal, right? That's, that would have been unheard of if we were buying big magic boxes that, that we were uh, appliances from, from vendors. Uh, so just dealing with you know, spinning rust and commodity servers and, and fast networking and open source software, we've got this incredible storage cluster. Uh, it's also cost effective and it's vendor supported if we want it. So obviously we uh, have a good relationship with Red Hat and Ink Tank, um, you know, but there are other people you can go to if you want support. That's a big thing for us. So the technology is open, we can make changes if we need to, but there's support available. It also supports things like live migration, copy on write for hyperfast boots. You know, this is a really big issue right now with, with the kind of resurgence of containers. I hate to call it the rise of because they've been around for a lot longer than people remember. Uh, but you know, we can boot instances, VMs, in, in like 45 to 60 seconds uh, on top of KVM and, and Ceph because of the copy, uh, copy on write technology, right? We are able to very quickly um, boot a VM because we're not having to download an image to the hypervisor or anything like that. Um, also, it's thin provisioned, which means that, you know, while it may be an 80 gig volume, right, for uh, the boot volume for a VM, the odds are is that it's just a, a thin provisioned copy on write of a standard Ubuntu image, right? So it's, it's saving us a lot in terms of cost efficiency. And it's got incredible integration with OpenStack that's just constantly getting better. So just software, no proprietary boxes. The first, uh, first part of the Cocoa stack. 
obviously, the, o, the first O is OpenStack. And I'm not going to dwell on this much because we're at the OpenStack Summit. If you don't know why OpenStack is, is uh, so important, you're, you know, you're probably not listening. Um, but for us, it was really all about the massive community, the momentum. And we saw from the beginning that the technology wasn't necessarily there at the time, but we knew it would get there. And we wanted to be a part of it and ensure that it was part of a stack that we could believe in for the future. So we dived in early. Um, and we're all in on OpenStack. That brings me to Cumulus. Uh, Cumulus Networks provides uh, something called Cumulus Linux. And we were one of the first public customers uh, of Cumulus. I think we actually outed Cumulus as a business at uh, the OpenStack Summit two or three years ago when we first started talking about what we were doing with Dream Compute. Um, and this really changed the game for us. You know, it's built on Linux, open source uh, wherever possible. Obviously, there's some proprietary silicon that makes it difficult to open source every single thing. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's an open source, very low cost, um, vendor supported uh, platform. And it, it does two things for us. Why is this important? Well, first, from a CapEx perspective, we're able to go out and buy white box switches from any number of supported vendors. And they're all the same to us. We develop relationships with these vendors. Um, they test them. You know, it's supported by Cumulus. And we put Linux on those switches. Uh, not only that, we don't have to buy you know, interconnects from the vendor. We can buy them from wherever we want to. So this saves a huge amount of cost there. And then from an OpEx perspective, your network goes from being this special case, this you know, walled garden of you know, proprietary CLIs, no APIs, right? It's not magic anymore. It's just another Linux box on my network, right? So now, instead of having a specialized network team manage my, my network, my cloud engineers manage it just like they would my hypervisor nodes or my storage nodes. It just happens to have, you know, 48, 10 gig uh, Ethernet interfaces, right? Um, we use the same tools. We use things like uh, Chef, Collecti, Grafana, Logstash, Nagios to, to monitor, manage, provision, and automate all of our network. This is a huge game changer for us. Um, so that's been a big foundation for us at layer two on our stack. And that brings us to the overlay. Um, we, we actually knew that this was going to be critical for us for you know, that layer two segmentation for isolation from each and every tenant in the cloud. And we also wanted to virtualize layer three and up. Uh, this has been a very tough part of our journey. You know, we got in this really early. We were one of the first customers of Nicira uh, prior to them being acquired by, by VMware. Uh, and NVP was a great solution for us for a while. Um, it became VMware NSX multi-hypervisor. But as we've kind of grown and, and expanded out, um, we've really wanted to get into that back to that open part here. And, and the choice there has become a lot better recently. Uh, between you know, kind of the advancements with VXLAN, the, the, the rise of Trident 2 switches, which can do uh, accelerated VXLAN NCAP and DCAP right in the silicon. Um, even you can get NICs that do this as well. Uh, this has made the, the choice a lot better. And, and now even with some of the hierarchical port binding features that are available now uh, and enabled by Neutron and OpenStack and Cumulus, uh, we can actually get a full overlay, fully automated with no controller, no magic. We don't have to patch our kernel, no OVS, and it all just works. It's so much simpler than a proprietary black box. So we're, we're big believers in this. And a critical factor for us is this Aconda project, which just like Ink Tank that we spun out uh, a few years ago, we've, we've spun out Aconda as a project. And it's built open from the beginning. It provides layer three network virtualization and above. And it actually does full on uh, network service orchestration. So we can run any network service that we want from routing to firewall, load balancing, inside virtual machines that are orchestrated in our OpenStack cloud. Uh, and it interfaces fully with Neutron, supports a lot of uh, great things. And this, again, open source. Go check them out on GitHub. Um, they're on StackForge. And you can go to Aconda.io to check them out as well. They have a booth. So this is another big part of our stack. It simplifies our Neutron deployment, developed by us from the start, and no magic. Right? That's kind of the real critical thing. So. Let's summarize. Right now, Dream Compute is in public beta. You can sign up for it today. We've got thousands of instances running on this Cocoa stack. Um, developer, entrepreneur, customers primarily. Unlike any other OpenStack cloud, that's our real focus. Um, purpose built for that market. And it's a proven platform now. You know, we're, we're, we're showing that this stack can work. And, and we're big believers in it. So why, why should you choose a Cocoa stack and, and join us and, and help learn from each other about this? Well, open platforms, you can contribute. You can make the, the community better. We want to benefit and help you benefit 
from collective kind of improvement in these technologies, right? Um, there's vendor support available if you need it and from multiple choices, right? You don't have to go to just one company to get support for these things. And over time, that'll, that'll continue to expand. And it's very low cost to deploy. So that's the Cocoa Stack and what we're doing at DreamHost with Dream Compute. Thank you. And I'll stick around up front if anyone has questions.